What's going on guys, my name is Matt and a lot of people have older desktops like this Acer and want to try and upgrade them for gaming. Now because this is a slim tower, it uses a non-ATX power supply and really doesn't have much room for a beefy graphics card, so in the past you would be limited to some pretty weak options, but right now in 2018, the GT 1030 does make a pretty compelling case for going into a system like this. With single slot, half height versions and only a 30 watt TDP, the GT the 1030 has almost universal compatibility in systems like this, so what specs is this Acer rocking? Well it has a Core 2 Quad Q8200, which as the name implies is a quad core processor running at 2.3GHz. The system also includes 4GB of DDR3 RAM and a 640GB hard drive. I've actually never paired a GT1030 with a Core 2 based system before, so I was pretty excited to see what the results were going to be. When I first got this PC and opened it up, it was very dusty, so I removed the fan and cleaned all of the caked on dust off the heatsink, and then I removed the heatsink, cleaned off the old thermal paste, and applied a fresh application of thermal paste. Like I said before, the system came with 4GB of RAM, which is okay for lighter games, but I didn't want the RAM to be the limiting factor in the system, so I added an extra 2GB stick just to give it a little more headroom for more RAM intensive games, I decided to test both the GDDR5 and DDR4 versions of the GT1030 in the system to see the performance difference in a system like this. In my original video comparing these two cards, linked above and in the description down below, I found when pairing them with the Ryzen 3 CPU, the DDR4 version was only performing about half as well as the GDDR5 version, so just to reiterate, if you are interested in a GT1030, it's generally best to steer away from the DDR4 version if you are looking for the most performance. While this Acer PC does have two expansion slots, the 16x PCIe slot is actually at the very bottom of the motherboard, meaning only half height single slot cards will fit. So my DDR4 GT1030 will slot right into place, but my GDDR5 version will not fit, but again keep in mind there are single slot GDDR5 versions available that will slot right into its place no problem problem, and I'll link some in the description down below. Because of this, it meant I was going to have to Frankenstein the motherboard outside of the case to make sure I could test both of these cards. One quick montage later, and the cards were ready to be tested. Now in general, I don't recommend buying a Core 2 quad based system, as i5-2400 systems are generally just slightly more expensive and provide vastly superior performance, but if you have one of these systems lying around, or get one from a family member, it begs the question of whether or not pairing a GT1030 with this Core 2 quad system will allow it to game. Now obviously most AAA titles are out of the question, but if you're building a system like this, you're probably not willing to throw down a lot of money for games, so for testing I decided to test 4 popular titles which include Fortnite, Overwatch, CSGO, and Rocket League. These games represent a good selection with varying system requirements and all of which are very popular right now. I tested all these games at 720p, medium settings as I think 1080p in most games would be too much. Starting with Fortnite, again at 720p, medium settings, this combo with the GDR5 version actually gave an almost 60fps average and the DDR4 version provided an average of 48fps. Both were playable experiences but the DDR5 GT1030 gave a more enjoyable experience. In Overwatch at 720p, medium settings with 100% resolution scaling, both of these performed pretty similarly with the GDR5 version getting the slight edge with a 44fps average versus is the DDR4 version's 41 FPS average. Moving on to CSGO, they again performed almost the same, probably because CSGO is a mostly CPU intensive game. At 720p, medium settings, both received an average of around 73 FPS. Finally, moving on to Rocket League at 720p, medium quality settings, the GDDR5 handily beat the DDR4 version with an average of 88 FPS, with the DDR4 version receiving an average of 61. Overall, I was pretty happy with the performance. Seeing an almost 60fps average with this Core 2 Quad and GDDR5 GT1030 in Fortnite was surprising. The slim difference in some of these games between the two cards can definitely be attributed to a CPU bottleneck, so a higher clock Core 2 Quad would definitely improve performance in many of these titles. So should you pair a GT1030 with a Core 2 Quad? Well like I said earlier, I wouldn't really recommend going out and buying a Core 2 Quad system, but if you have one lying around or get one for free and you're wanting to do some esports gaming, then pairing a GDDR5 GT1030 
wouldn't be the worst idea, especially if you only have room for a single slot half height card. Again, I would steer away from the DDR4 GT1030, as even with a lowly Core 2 quad, it still performs significantly worse in many of the titles. So yeah guys, I think this wraps this video up. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up, as well as consider subscribing for more PC and tech related content in the future. And as always, this is Matt from Tech by Matt, signing out.